being the first company to put fans inside their phone, Nubia is bringing the big guns out with the Red Magic 8 Pro. This is probably the ultimate gaming phone and probably the best one I've had my hands on in a very long time. This is the Red Magic 8 Pro in its matte version. There's also a void version that features a transparent backing that looks pretty sweet. Wish we had that on hand, but we have the other sexy AF offering in matte black. Red Magic boasts that this is the first OLED full screen within the industry and by that I mean there isn't a visible notch or front facing cam because it's actually underneath the screen. It is a mighty fine looking phone off the bat with its aviation aluminium frame so let's get the basics out of the way first. The Red Magic 8 Pro uses a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 plus a dedicated gaming chip called the Red Core 2. Basically that's a lot of power. It has a 6,000 mAh dual cell battery or basically two 3,000 mAh batteries in the back and it has super fast charging at 65 watts. Storage depends on the design you get. The matte, like the one we have down here, has 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, whilst the Void version has 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. Both versions come with a pair of 520Hz dual shoulder triggers and both ones run the IC11 multi-damage cooling system and a whole bunch of other stuff. Before anything else, I really want to point out this phone's shoulder triggers. Most gaming phones already have triggers, but Red Magic is coming in with ultra-fast tippy taps and full-on customization in ways that will surprise you. Other players will not see it coming. These things have served me extremely well when I'm playing COD and PUBG, but we'll get into that later on. The matte version has a certain sense of class to it. I'm pretty sure the Void looks just as cool and sleek IRL, but the matte feel and look of the phone paired with its subtle flavor text and including Red Magic's new logo, so good looking, it's handsome, it's not gimmicky at all. You probably don't need a case for this because it isn't a super smudge magnet and I really wouldn't want to cover up the design at the back because why would you? Also, there's an inbuilt Wi-Fi in the phone if you're into that. Hey, Commander. I really just wonder how gaming phone companies come up with this stuff. <coughs> well, I'm going Bitch. back. But to be fair, Shark Channel on my Black Shark 5 Pro wakes me up every morning, so... So gaming wise, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 coupled with the IC11 cooling system, the 520Hz dual shoulder triggers and 6000mAh battery combined with its beautiful display makes it more than certified for gaming. There's also the Red Core 2 which is a secondary chip made to process everything else like audio, haptic feedback and RGB lighting which is available at the back of the phone. It helps you game better so that the Snapdragon can focus on performance. Through our gaming tests and benchmarks, it can pretty much handle anything that's thrown at it without breaking a sweat. Whether it's Genshin Impact or Apex Legends, you'll get beautiful graphics and a smooth performance without the heat. Thanks to the improvements, Red Magic has made to its heat dissipation. So in addition to its fans that run at 20,000 RPM, they also put in a layer of graphene under the screen with a large 3D vapor cooling plate and like 8 other layers that'll keep your phone cool throughout your day and your gameplay. So <laughs> if you... You don't need to worry about it overheating or anything. This this thing... <laughs> oh. Now, if you want to get into gaming real quick, just shift this red button down here to the side and it'll send you straight to the Red Magic game space where you can manage your games, plugins, which almost feel like cheating, and screencasting options. Not forgetting all the settings you can change and boy, there are a lot. I'm going to be honest and say there is a steep learning curve about this phone's game settings alone in order to fully utilize all of its features but you can also just skip past all of that, concern yourself with only the fan modes, performance and GPU mode, and color settings for the various game types like racing and shooters. You will still be able to enjoy playing games right out of the box without having much to set up. And speaking of setting things up, the triggers are pretty easy to set up. But yes, they are. Just swipe left or right on these gray bars, click this, and just place the positions of the triggers here onto the side and the fire buttons and you can program the triggers to long press, double tap, turning any gun to firing bursts only. So Red Magic has an extensive list of whatever type of button click they would think you'd need in whatever situations you would find yourself in games or whatever play styles you have. So, <laughs> wow, like hats off to them for that. There are a ton of options here to play the games you do the way you want to and don't even get me started on the plugins because you can set a magnifying glass in the middle of the screen so you never need to scope in game or invert the colors for a predator-esque view to better spot your enemies without the sound unfortunately. I don't really use these plugins because I am a very fair kind of player. I like to think I'm pretty decent in most games but they are always there for your perusal and use. Also, do take note that not every plugin will be available for every game. And if you want to know what games are compatible with which plugins, they are in the description for each plugin. 
some of the titles like PUBG are supposed to have certain plugins like Hunt Mode, Investigate Mode and Double Tap Assist which says it's meant for FPS's but it doesn't turn up on the menu for PUBG and say COD Mobile respectively. Hopefully Nubia updates it at some point. So besides being impressed with the options they have, the triggers themselves are extremely responsive and I haven't found myself struggling with firing or aiming down sights in any way. And I have to say the inclusion of triggers in any form is always an added and welcome advantage similar to the ROG and Black Shark phones, though I prefer the Black Shark's tactile triggers, but that's a, that's a me thing. Besides that, you can also manage and create notes, especially for games like Genshin and Diablo Immortal where you need to take note of certain things. The game space feels like a true extension of the experience of having the Red Magic 8 Pro and I don't find it a hassle to use unlike other similar game menus slash hubs. And speaking of the game space, why not shoot for the stars with your productivity in style with the Asus ZenBook 14X OLED Space Edition. This video is brought to you by Asus. Check out the Asus ZenBook 14X OLED Space Edition commemorating the 25th anniversary of the first ASUS laptop sent into space. Not only does it offer a space-exclusive design, but it's even worthy of going where no man has gone before with its space-grade durability. It even comes with a 3.5-inch OLED companion Zen Vision display, and you will have a ball of a time taking in the views with a 16x10 4K OLED Nano Edge Pantone validated 14-inch display. Performance so far with gaming has been pretty damn solid and that's still an understatement since I had quite a bit of time with it in our game test video you can check out like right here somewhere on there please check it out yeah, I got some good kills I was playing Genshin and then PUBG and then Apex and then caught M one after another back to back and the temperatures were still a solid 33 years to 38 at max the battery went down from like 100 to as little as what 70 percent ish after full games and we're talking like 20 and 30 minute games back to back and the fans and the ice 11 heat management system didn't break a sweat with how efficient it is but i really believe the games ran smoothly in due part to the red core 2 which again takes away all the processing for audio haptic feedback and rgb lighting basically anything else that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 doesn't need to be concerned about so that it can focus on getting the best performance for your games and all I can say is damn. On top of all that we've run some benchmarks with Geekbench and 3D Mark and here are the results of said benchmarks. Alright with the benchmark scores in it's 1396 for the single core and 5210 for the multi-core. Let's check how it fares against other phones. Single core wise it's stacked up at 1396 compared to a lot of older phones like the S21 Plus 5G which is at 906 or even the Ultra at 909 even the Xiaomi Poco F3 is at 932 so this thing is doing pretty well in terms of single core but when we go to multi-core it's at 5210 and it completely obliterates all the competition here so it's about 30-ish not too bad just like we've seen with the games let's check the back 29-ish not too bad. I mean, Geekbench is pretty light when it comes to processes. So let's put it through 3D Mark and see what happens. We're on the 10th loop of the 3D Mark test, so you can hear the fence revving. So that's the fence revving up, and let's do a quick temperature check on the front of the screen. It's heating up pretty. F Ooh, 44. That's the highest I've seen it go. Wow. Oh my god, that's hot. Okay, let's check the back. Ooh, it's about the same as the front. Okay, so let's check back in a bit and see how it fares on the 20th loop. And we just got done with the Wildlife Extreme stress test and this thing is still working out. You can just hear the fans. It's still working on clearing the heat out, but let's see what the scores are like. But oh my, oh, that is hot. 41, 42, that is extremely hot to the touch even. Yeah, oh, dude, this thing's hot. 39, 37, 34. Wow, the temperature's actually going down at the back. I wonder if it's changed on the front. Oh yeah, everything's going down. That's, that's pretty quick. Wow, okay. All right, so based on the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test, we have a best loop score of 3720 and a lowest loop score of 3645. And that's pretty impressive. Let's see whether... Oh. Interestingly, for its performance monitoring, its battery went down from 100% to 88%. Temperature-wise, went to 30 degrees Celsius to 48 degrees Celsius, which is a lot more than the games we've played, which usually hover about like 30 to about 35, maybe at max 38, but never 48. But then again, it's an extreme stress test. 
and frame rate went from 17 fps to 27 fps so pretty damn impressive so far so this phone has you covered performance wise for days performance for days performance for days i guess the downside of owning this phone is that its camera is just well it's there if you want to use it it's not the best on the 0.5 times and anything above one honestly taking videos on this thing Stabilization is pretty much non-existent. I mean, it's meant to be a gaming phone first and everything else second, so don't expect stellar pictures and videos, but it does get the job done. If you aren't a stickler for image and video quality like Bobby, Zeki, and I are, then it shouldn't bother you so much. All in all, gaming on this has been a dream. I genuinely enjoyed playing all my games on the Red Magic 8 Pro. Then there are the plugins and the options to add notes you can pull up in the game later on, and then there are a lot of options and Red Magic has really sat down and put a lot of thought into that when it comes to gaming on this phone. Saying this phone is just solid for gaming is a grievous understatement and if this is the future Red Magic is bringing to the table, I am all for it. If you have any questions about this phone, leave them in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to get to them. Make sure to follow us on all of our socials right here and if you want to see the gaming test and how this thing fares in a real world test, just keep on watching. But don't forget to drop that like and subscribe to us, it goes a long way. I'll see you again soon. Before we get into the gaming test, let's just do a little temperature check. So on the front, we haven't really done much with this yet. So let's just see. 26. The fan's not on yet, by the way. So here we go. 26 degrees, 26.5 around here. And at the back, 25.6, 25.9. Nothing really hitting 30, so we are good to go. All right, with the game set, let's just get into it. So before we get into the game, let's just set up the performance monitor. So either you swipe left or right, it works either way. Here we go, info. So now here we get a sense of the FPS and the time we play and also our percentage and how much time we've played on as well. So right now we are 100% battery and let's just keep it in the corner down here. Let's also set up the triggers once we get into the game. We have dialog down here, let's set up the settings real quick. Right, so graphically we are on the highest everywhere. High, high, high. High. Highest. 60 FPS, high. Oh, we can put extreme actually, but now nah, wait, that's motion blur, I don't want that. Bloom's on, cause why not? TAA is on. For the listen. And, okay. We're good, we're set. But before that, let's just go and walk around the city real quick. So with the triggers, there are a ton of options on what kind of triggers you want. So as you can see, this long press, rapid fire for more of the FPS stuff. And then after that, this press trigger for macros, which you can enable down here. And on top of that, there's also the rapid fire, which you can increase or decrease the click frequency. So now that we're in the city, this is a beautiful screen. It's showing off everything beautifully. There hasn't been any frame rate drops. It is, the Red Magic Pro is handling this like a beast. And I just need to point out that the front facing camera is hidden underneath the screen. So you guys won't have any notches breaking any sort of immersion. And let's just keep moving through the city. So with that, let's just get into a fight real quick. Let's check temperatures. We're currently at 92% battery with about 0 0.6 hours on play time. A blade embraces its duty. Yeah, it's doing pretty well. And honestly, to the touch, it's quite, it's not warm, but it's not cold either. So it's kind of in the middle. 
room temperature almost towards the warmer side but other than that it feels really good in hand let's just check the back real quick 33 36 34 so yeah honestly I, there's nothing to complain about this is a beast so far but let's get into the next game let's go UHD still not available ultra HD though yes uh, frame rate ultra because we can't afford it I kind of want to go for more colorful one in this playthrough uh, let's go four times and DLC oh still a comment still not available let's go two times instead shadows enabled brightness non-standard screens uh, yeah, everything is set so let's just get into the game right, let's go. Okay, off the bat, very nice. See that? It's very responsive, the triggers. Oh, there you go. Can't see where this guy is at. Oh, I see him now. There you go. Down, one more guy left. Is it him? Oh, it is. There we go. So let's check final temperatures before we get into the next game. Currently, 41 FPS, 83% left, 0.5 hours. We're half an hour into the match. 35.3. Nothing has changed so far. That fan is doing damn well for this. All right, let's check the back. 33, 34, yeah, this phone is amazing. All right, so before the game, let's check out temperatures real quick. 32-ish, yeah, it has gone down quite a bit, and we, and we just came off PUBG, by the way. So the fan and its Ice 11 cooling system is really doing the job. Let's check the back. 24, 32, yeah, these are really, really healthy numbers. All right. So let's check settings real quick. So extreme HD for graphics quality, ultra high frame rate, adaptive smoothing is on, display FPS, we don't need that since we already have the Red Magic one already. FPV all set to what I like, v is on, everything on advanced is turned on high or turned on. Ooh, okay. But everything's rendering pretty nicely except for that. But I think it's a game, not really a phone issue. Oh. Oh, no. There you go, got you. Finish up. Very smooth. 0.4 hours on the clock, 61 FPS, 60 FPS. And honestly, no issues just yet. The triggers feel great. When I'm playing with them again, I will not use any of the plugins for this run through because I like to play fair. All right, just like that, we we kind of won. Wow. Okay. So so far, our experience with Apex has been pretty smooth. No drastic FPS drops whatsoever. The triggers feel amazing to play and fire and aim with. So let's just do a final temperature check before we move on to the next game. All right, at the end of the game, at about like what 0.4 hours, we're down to 75% from the original 80%. 30 ish across the board. Wow, that's not bad actually. That's really in line with everything else, and we, we've been playing games back to back. So, after Apex, we're going to go into Call of Duty Mobile. The mage is looking really good right now. Okay, a little bit of a drop for some reason. Let's just open this up. Currently at 28 FPS, but let's see what we can change it up in the settings. According to graphics, let's go very high. You can't change it up, you can't go down the highest for either. Or. So, same thing with other phones. Um, you can only go with high for the max. If you want to go ultra frame rate for multiplayer, it will automatically bring you down to low. So, let's just go with max frame rate and very high. So, at least we got the highest on both ends ish. 
And then let's see, multiplayer, death of field, and dealing, blue, and ragdoll. Let's put all of that in. Enemy taking Charlie. We're capturing A. Oh, this moved out would be very smart. Enemy has C. Enemy taking B. Captured Alpha. Capturing Bravo. So with the match done, there hasn't been a huge dip in the FPS, it's still been at a constant, almost 50 meters to 51 FPS, and we're only on about, about zip in 2 hours in. There we go. That's the way. Alright, and that's the second match. Let's check temperatures real quick before we hit the conclusion. 35, 34, yeah, it's pretty much the same. Not bad. 33, 33, 34, 35. That's pretty good. Wow. Okay, let's just. To sum up my thoughts, I really enjoy playing with the Red Magic 8 Pro. I gotta say, Red Magic puts so much thought into creating this phone, whether it's the fans inside that goes in tangent with the IC11 cooling system, the Red Core 2 chip that takes away every other process to let the mean Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 focus on performance, or the amount of options, plugins, and features GameSpace has. This is a phone that is going in the direction gaming phones should be heading. Response times on the screen and triggers are more than there and the feeling of playing with it in my hand is immaculate. Simply put, I enjoyed the heck out of playing with this phone.